Hello everyone. Welcome to Trains on Tuesday. Hello Heath. Um, December 1st. November's gone. But today we're going to talk about my activities here <laughs> in November on the layout. It's been an incredibly busy month for me. Uh, lots done. Lots and lots of work done. So, first thing I'm going to show you is that uh, finally I have a proper designated place to put my coffee mug without having to sit it up on the layout. Ha! Good stuff. Oh, we've got a coal train coming. Um, yeah, busy, busy month. As the month began, I, uh, I had plans to work, continue the work near the station there, uh, getting back rockers done, but, uh, that didn't happen. That didn't happen at all. Let me show you. So you see where the backdrop ends there, um, just behind the VA engine at the station there. And then we're looking at bare wall behind the trees and the buildings here. And that stretched on way down here until we came to some buildings in the background again, in the background. Actually the sky isn't even complete behind those so what I'd had in there before was these buildings here just paper cutouts but no sky behind them now I had some off cuts of sky from my backdrops that I did on the east wall and uh, I began piecing those together to fit in there and it was coming along quite nicely until I came to this road here and I wondered what am I going to do with that and that brought me to a stop as I pondered what to do about that there and the solution I've come up with nothing nothing too spectacular lots of people are doing this I'm going to put a bridge against the backdrop there and a photograph of a scene through a bridge and I wanted to use a local bridge here um, we don't have very many uh, suitable um, locations for me to get a photograph and the biggest problem is of course it is now winter uh, the trees are bare and I want this to be a summertime scene so nothing is going to get completed there until next summer so I turn my attention to other things so I decided to come over on this side of the layout and work on my ramp that led up into the uh, the prairie branch line and uh, extend it on down and around the curve to where it could rejoin the main line further down giving giving me a longer switch lead on the on the uh, hill here let me just show you what I took out of there this was the original ramp right there it joined the main line right here there was a turnout under here under under this uh, Sort of ballasted area here there was a turnout and it went up the ramp just that little short distance and joined the uh the prairie branch line right here where this ballasted area is here so that's what i cut out of there and i ended up putting in a very long ramp down here very long down to that turnout there um i think what we'll do at this point is 
we'll switch to some uh, photographs that I took as I was working and uh, I'll, I'll narrate over the photographs and uh, we'll, we'll take a look and see where this all ended up. Here we can see the uh, switch and the ramp as it was uh, heading up into the prairie branch line. And here blue markers for the cut lines that I had to do. And then two or three pictures of uh, the area after I'd got it all cut out. After I'd got the ramp built in there, I began plastering over it to uh, smooth out the grade. And a bit of scenic work. There's the other end, uh, down where the, uh, the other end of the mine, where the switch used to come off the main lines. And uh, you can see the track at the end there where I hope to join up to. There's another view of it showing the roadway up into the mine site way too steep. There's the area that I cut out. Not a very big amount had to come out of there. Another view of it. I then cut a paper template, as you see here, to uh, cut out a piece of plywood to fit in there. Take that to the plywood and cut it out with the jigsaw. and got it fitted then plastered and time for the first test train Now with that test successfully done, I tore all the track up again, continuing, continued to add plaster and uh, got it ready for painting. Now in the next shot, I want you to pay attention to the backdrop, the background there. That was always a mess like that. Piece of wood sticking up, styrofoam insulation packed in there, and a little piece of, uh, two foot gauge track sticking out over the end of it. I was on a roll, so I carried on working there. There's another view of the uh, unfinished styrofoam mountains over the back of the mine. And here we see the start of um, the mountain there on that end, on the east end. Adding a little bit of track to the uh, the two foot gauge, popping the top of the mountain on, and here I'm holding the piece that I cut out for the tunnel mouth that will go into the mountain for the two foot gauge, and there we see the little ore cars running into the mountain. A general view of it. I've since taken the village up as you will see. Uh, that's been removed and I'm starting to put that onto a stepped up uh, piece of ground instead of flat ground. You'll see that again uh, towards the end of the video. There, There's the area cleared off. I then turn my attention to the control panel. This is what it used to look like. Um, 
Not all of those switches were in use, but uh, that's what it used to look like. Uh, and it worked well. I knew what I was doing. I spent a whole day changing it to look like this. The best benefit I've got out of it so far is that I've got a coffee mug coaster on the left hand side. I'm still getting used to how it works. It does work, but. So to bring us up to date on the, uh, on the work for November, there we can see the mountain is partially painted. And down in there you can see the, uh, the villagers been stepped up a little bit in the background. Uh, the road has been continued off the backdrop onto the layout. All the work that I've done down here has been painted, barring a little piece in there which is going to end up being hidden behind a retaining wall. Not this particular wall, but uh, there'll be a retaining wall there. And we have some uh, much improved running. Now, as part of this, I put in this crossover here from the branch line back onto the main. And further down, we have another crossover there. I worked really hard to get that to work nicely. Tested it, everything works fine. And now, operationally, discovered I really don't have much use for that. Um, that may change, that may change because um, westbound trains run on this line, um, eastbound on this, and this is the Prairie Branch, and of course you've got bi-directional running on that, but anything coming off of the brook, this one, um, westbound, has to cross this one and get onto this one. That all happens down here at the crossovers down here. Um, the usefulness of that other crossover will be switching the sawmill. That's been in there a few years and I have only ever switched cars in and out of there once or twice. Um, it has been difficult. But with that crossover, I can now bring a train, eastbound train, off the main over the westbound. I'm forgetting which is west and which is east now. Anyway, I can cross right over and switch that much easier. So hopefully, we'll be seeing that working before long. Get our coal train running again. He is eastbound. And as he runs eastbound, we have a loaded grain train coming in off the prairies, westbound, headed for the ports. Now this is going to be a little tricky. I've got to remember what turnouts I need. Um, I'm going to need that one, that block. And we're going to need that one. And that one. I'm turning, moving turnouts here as this train comes around. I think that is all I need. Let's see what happens. Let's see if this one manages to get across.
There we go. And now we'll get the turnouts behind him. And he got clear of the main, the uh, eastbound main, just in time for the next train to come along. As he does that, take a look at the little mining train. Now if all this were not enough excitement, I also went and got myself a new engine, not that one, that one. This is an SD40-2F, F as in Freddy. This particular one, number 9000, is in the CP Rail Systems dual flag livery. Model is by Bowser and it is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. That loco is so gorgeous. I went and got myself a second one, number 9005. This one does not have the dual flag paint system, or, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the livery on it. Um, this is the one I'm more familiar with, although I did see them both ways. Um, these locos are now retired from CP, but uh, <laughs> it's a strange story. The CP sold them off when they were finished with them. Uh, some of them were bought by another railroad and now CP has bought that railroad so CP's got them back again anyway I'll be getting this one out of the box very shortly
Well, it's been quite a long one, so I guess we'll call it a wrap. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you'll like it. I hope you'll share it. Comment. Please comment. I love the comments. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again next week for another Trends on Tuesday. Mug today, courtesy of my cousin Stephen of the uh, Kettle Valley Railway. Bye for now, everyone.